Welcome to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today we celebrate the solemnity of St. Joseph, husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valliere. Alexio Divina is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 1, verses 16, 18 through 21, and 24. And let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your Church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our Gospel passage proclaimed by Michael Toole. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. On this beautiful solemnity and feast day, we need to recognize that the present is a time for all of us to put our faith into action. This is a call we all receive at baptism, and we can find the answer on how to do this by looking at the life of St. Joseph. The Bible pays St. Joseph the highest compliment. The scriptures tell us he was a just man. In one sense, God, through his holy word in scripture, justifies Joseph and declares him righteous. By saying Joseph was just, the scriptures tell us that he was one who was completely open to all that God wanted to do for him, and he too was obedient to the will of God, just as his wife, Mary. He became holy by opening himself totally to God. The scriptures tell us Joseph was already married to Mary, but had not yet taken her into his house, as was the custom in those days. They already loved each other. However, the appearance of an angel, a messenger from God, to both Mary and Joseph took the two of them by surprise. Mary, we know, responded with her fiat, a yes to her call to be the mother of God. Now, there is no contradiction of Joseph's righteousness that he decided to divorce Mary when she was found to be with child. The important words of the scriptures are that he planned to do this quietly, because he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame. When the angel had announced to Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Joseph's response was immediate. 
When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, the scriptures tell us. Obedience made it possible for him to surmount his difficulties and spare Mary. From then on, Joseph simply, joyfully, and wholeheartedly was obedient to God's will in taking Mary as his wife, in naming the son Jesus, in traveling to Bethlehem for the birth, in fleeing into exile in Egypt, in searching and finding Jesus in the temple. All these things speak to Joseph's righteousness and holiness. All Catholics, not just the men, are called to imitate Joseph's virtue of creative courage. Pope Francis said, in the face of difficulty, we can either give up and walk away or somehow engage with it. He continued to say, at times, difficulties bring out resources we did not even think we had. It is here we see St. Joseph as proof. St. Joseph embraced his role as guardian of the family. He protected Mary, our Blessed Mother, and Jesus, our Savior. He guarded them through dangers, adversities, and difficulties, and kept them from harm's way. All of us are called to be guardians of the family as well, simply because Catholic families need defenders not only physically, but spiritually in particular. We live in a time when the family faces many challenges and a very hostile culture. It is because of this that we must do our part through creative courage to build strong, faithful, committed Catholic families. St. Joseph also served as guardian of the truth. The truth that Joseph protected had a name, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we too must defend his truth. We live in times of falsehoods and lies, of bigotry and intolerance. The truths about marriage, about life, about the nature of the family, about all the natural laws, are increasingly denied and even vilified. It is for this reason our commitment to the truth is all the more important. Now is the time for all Catholics to be imitators of St. Joseph and stand for the truth, proclaim the truth, and live the truth. St. Joseph is our guide. Let us persistently pray for his intercession. Let us make his creative courage a virtue of our own. For the sake of our families, for the sake of Holy Mother Church on earth, and for the sake of the truth found in Jesus Christ. After our closing prayer, reread the scripture passage and contemplate its message. Concentrate on a thought that comes to you, maybe a verse or even a word that touches you, and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you and how you may spiritually grow closer to Him. And now let us complete our closing prayer. And let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished by your holy word as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be upon you always and may his blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.